Let's get back to the market. David Barnson with us this morning. In fact, he's a glutton for punishment. He's staying for the entire first hour of the show. All right, David, futures are now moving higher. Would you say that investors are beginning to calm down as in, in reaction to this war? I think that they're still skittish. A lot of the weak hands that exacerbated the volatility, even building up to it, you had a sort of sell the rumor by the news yesterday, a kind of inverse yeah. of normal market activity. But I do think there's a lot of people afraid of missing out, meaning that all of a sudden there's some announcement of capitulation, of de-escalation, something that creates a market rally and that they don't want to miss it. History is pretty clear on this. I looked up this morning, our last 12 global military escalations, all 12, the market was down the day of, and all uh, 11 of the 12, they ended in positive territory that day. So I don't think it's usually the first day, but I really want to comment on what the ambassador said, if you'll let me. You've got 30 seconds. They don't want a little bit of pain in Europe in order to extend a lot of pain to Russia. That's what's holding back the one thing that has teeth, which is obviously energy sanctions. They have to ban the imports of Russian energy. That hits Russia the most. It would hurt Europe. That's what they're trying to avoid doing, but that's where they're going to have to go. Eventually, maybe. Eventually. But they're terrified of being terrified. cut off from natural gas from Russia. Yeah. Terrified of it. All right, David, you're here for the hour. Thanks very much. Stay there, please. Uh, let's have a look at the cryptos this morning. Getting close to 40 grand on Bitcoin. 39.1 is mm -hmm. the price right now. Mm. There's another case for this. Uh, we're seeing donations come in via Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies on crowdfunded sites to support the Ukrainian civilians, the Ukrainian military effort. It's raised almost $1 million in just a couple of hours. And then you have one crypto exchange, FTX, giving $25 uh, to each of its Ukrainian account holders. And why are you looking at me like that? Because David is sitting right next to me. He's got a sour look on his face. And so do you. To say, look, this. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> cryptos, they're going to work in Kiev at the moment. Do they serve any function? Um, it does not, uh, other than for uh, gangsters and criminal actors, but it's ironic. I would, I would argue that most of the argument in this case with martial law works against crypto, not for it. And I understand your point of the banking system, but I think that's a Ukrainian measure put in place as a temporary stopgap to avoid a run on the bank. Uh, the reality is that no Ukrainian thinks it's going to last in perpetuity. It's a temporary problem. Yeah. Where does crypto solve it? It's it subject to hackers. The Russian hackers are the best in the world. It getting to crypto exchanges. So I think there's a lot of instability. Okay, I'd love to continue, but you Maybe know how it is. Maybe the sanctioned elite will go to crypto though. Coming up on Heartbreak, you know how it is, right? Now, David Barnson, glutton for punishment, here for the entire hour. He's got dividend plays for us, started by, but it's got to be a, a rising dividend play, hasn't it? Yes, that's the idea, which means that our uh, friends at Block or Square don't make the cut. So we don't get to be up 20% today, but of course we don't have to be down 60% that it still is in the last six months after today's rally. Ah, okay. So tell me about Lockheed Martin. Go ahead. Lockheed Martin's up 15% in the last three months. It has grown the dividend in 20 years in a row. Our thesis on Lockheed Martin has nothing to do with Russia, Ukraine. People say, well, there's maybe war breaking out. Don't people want more of those? There's a huge lag between orders that get placed from the Pentagon and that end up getting into the bottom line of the defense companies. Mm -hmm. Lockheed has to have a backlog of orders. They're a cash flow generating machine and they pay a growing dividend. Chevron, which you've recommended before many, many times. Many times, actually. many times. We've run it a very long time. We've made an awful lot of money with it. I'm br bringing it up again because of the Russian energy discussion. Mm -hmm. There is no question that you're going to end up with a higher margin. These producers, Exxon, Chevron, make money at $50 oil. They make plenty of money at $50 oil. 93 may not stick. You may end up in the 80s. That's a higher baseline than 50. It's a higher margin, more incentive to produce. And again, all the Biden administration is doing to hurt oil and gas in the states helps Exxon and Chevron because it takes away competition from new projects. American Electric Power. Really important one. They've also grown the dividend every year for 20 years. A utility company just had great numbers when the market was down huge this week. AEP was up. It's the one utility we really like. Do you think Russia should be kicked off the SWIFT system? Of course I do.
You do. Of course I do. They're acting like a rogue nation state. We kicked all of the terrorist countries off uh, back after 9-11. They're still off to this day. The terrorist nations can't use SWIFT to transact, and we shouldn't allow a country that is invading an independent, sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. This is, And I don't even think it's the nuclear option, because I was telling you off air, going after their central bank is the nuclear option. How would you go after the central oh, bank? Oh, you just stop allowing transactions from central bank to central bank, inter-dealer transactions. Are we prepared to shut down Russia? as a business, as an economy complete, because that's what you're talking We're about. We're not prepared to do it unilaterally. They want, I think the president wants European support on this, and Europe is who blocking us, is blocking us going after SWIFT. I think we need to get prepared to do it real quick. Do you think the Europeans would ever agree to shut down their energy trade, cross-border energy trade yeah, with I Russia? Yeah, I think that if they turn on their TVs and see what's happening in Kiev and understand it could happen to them, maybe that would make it a little more serious. You're a tough guy. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. On this one, I am. I believe in the international order my friend you wrote a book it's called there's no free lunch yeah. There's no free lunch on energy, is there? No, there isn't. Whatever we do, somebody gets hurt. That's exactly right. Whatever happens will have a cost, but that's all of economics, but it'll be a bigger cost to Russia than them and for a greater good. All right. David, look, thanks for being with us for the hour. It was great to have you, and I hope to see you again. Thanks, Stuart. Thank you, sir.